Good afternoon, everybody, and happy holidays. I uh, appreciate you joining us here today. I'm Tony Carroll, and I'm the South Carolina State Manager and Chief Training Manager here at Security Title. Um, we're, I'm going to be moderating today's presentation. But before we begin, uh, just a few housekeeping items. You are in listen-only mode, so feel free to ch uh, chomp on some chips. Um, and we will be addressing questions at the end of the presentation. You'll see a questions box over on your GoToWebinar panel. If that GoToWebinar panel is in your way, there's a little orange arrow that will collapse and expand it for you. And you can drag it um, off to the side so you can get the full experience here on our webinar. We are super excited to have Diane Tom, uh, the Chief Executive Officer from the American Land Title with us today and Ted Rogers, the president of Security Title. Um, they're gonna be giving us a 2023 20, year afternoon. end. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ted. Good afternoon, Diane. Hey, Tony, Ted, great to see you both. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. Um, but today we're gonna to go, you know, do a little bit of a 2023 year end review and insights into 2024. We're in a very different market than we were last year with rising interest rates, a lot of legislative initiatives, affordable housing and lack of inventory. Um, we're going to hear some great insights from our two experts on how these factors affected 2023 and how they will impact our 2024. Diane, I know we have a lot to, to, uh, to cover here uh, and Ted as well. So let's just jump right in. Uh, Diane, can you talk a little bit about some of the key achievements Alta had in 2023? Absolutely, Tony. Again, thank you for the invitation to be here today, Ted. I know you've been a great partner to Alta, and I know Tony's been very active, and we can't thank everybody in the title industry participating for how important that has been this year um, of all years. Um, and Tony, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it because there really has been a lot of significant work done, particularly on the regulatory front, because there has been so much overreach in our industry. But I don't want to also um, dismiss how challenging the economic environment has been for everyone and how extended it is. And, you know, hopefully, I think we're all being cautiously optimistic that things will adjust to, at the latest by 2025. But I think to your point, um, it's really important to talk about one of the efforts, which I think many people, particularly those who've been involved on the advocacy front are aware of, is the pilot program that we found out about earlier this year. And I think for many people, because some of us talk about it so often, we get into sort of all these acronyms and we get into all of these things that's not very helpful for many who are just hearing about it, maybe after the fact or came in, you know, mid mid row as to what this meant and what it means. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to take a moment to sort of step back to April of 2022, which is okay. when the attorney opinion letters was first announced. And the reason I, I'd like to do that today, which is different than we had all discussed, is because we did get an updated announcement today from FHFA. Well, really, it was Fannie Mae put out some updates. They put out their seller guides today, and there's some updates in there. And I want to help put this in context for everyone and how we are handling it. So in April 2022, many of you will remember, again, um, Fannie updates their seller guides periodically. They always do it at the end of the year. So if you haven't seen today's, there's a whole list of things in there. And um, back in April of 2022, they just listed one. And it had to um, relate to the acceptance of attorney opinion letters in limited circumstances. And what was unusual about that at that time is normally when something like that's going to happen that affects an industry, they reach out to the industry in advance and they usually have conversations even when they know the industry won't like it they want to gather information they want to understand why what are the reasons those types of things in that particular case it did not happen so we were all sort of taken aback by it and spent you know significant amount of time trying to get our arms around it you may recall at that time we had invited the secretary wasn't confirmed in her role as the director. We had invited her to be our speaker at Advocacy Summit, which was only a few weeks away when that announcement came out. She ended up not being able to attend at the last minute, sent her deputy, 
but our board at the time did have an opportunity to have a conversation with FHFA to really better understand what it is they were trying to accomplish. And at that, shortly after that, the um, FHFA, along with the, um, the current administration, the Biden administration, announced this effort to address um, affordability for first-time home buyers, specifically in the African-American community. And then they expanded it to be larger, first-time home buyers, Latinos, and other hard-to-reach communities. So the idea was that these attorney opinion letters could actually be less expensive and could benefit the first-time home buyers. But the, at that point, what they hadn't really done their homework on was, and they haven't really demonstrated this to be the case, is that it's not less expensive in many states. I think, as you all know, there are lots of different things that happen. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it's must much higher risk for this particular audience is because the type of properties and others, and it could, you know, in many cases, we know this with our research, particularly the research that we've done this past year, the fraud and all of these other issues that come up that can't be searched on a, um, you know, doing just a record search, right? All of that type of information. And right. so that the end, at the end of the day, there's a good chance that the potential home buyer could lose their home as a result of, you know, not being able, because of an attorney opinion letter over title insurance, which obviously, you know, works to keep people in and all of the great work that you all and our industry does up front on the curative front. So, you know, we spent a good part of 2022 understanding what they were trying to accomplish, making sure they had the right information, and more, more importantly, making sure people understood the value of our product, which we know um, one of the things we did in early 2020 was do our Tell Our Story campaign, because we know we haven't done a good job of making sure consumers know what our product is and how it is going to benefit them. So, you know, that's a lot in a short period of time, but I think that's really important because then, you know, in early 20, 2023, and oh, by the way, the lenders really were not adopting these attorney opinion letters because they were really concerned because they understand the risk component of it, right? That the risk was being shifted to them. And so by the end of 2023, actually as recent as October, 47 AOLs had been used as a result of Fannie making this shift, right? Which I think in a lot of part had to do with the good work that we did educating the lenders, making sure people understood what those risks were and, and them understanding it. And this, particularly in this economic environment. So in early 2023, one of our members made us aware of this pilot program that Fannie Mae was also considering. And of course we became very concerned about this program because really what it did was it made Fannie Mae move into the private, I mean, into the primary market. You know, they were created and chartered to be in the secondary market, right? To create liquidity for first time home buyers. And now they were, you know, for lack of a better way of describing it, is they wanted to self insure and they were going to work with a third party to do this. And so we spent an enormous amount of time not only educating um, the FHFA but also on Capitol Hill, thanks to every one of you who stepped up and donated to TIPAC, and more importantly, who showed up for Advocacy Summit. We had you know, significant amount of um, folks show up, educate, and it really worked. We were able to, I received a call from um, Sec, um, Director Thompson, who's the head of FHFA, who makes the final decision. And I actually, I received a call from um, Priscilla alma Dolber of Fannie Mae, to tell me that they had decided not to move forward with this pilot program. So our efforts were successful. That happened in August, as you know, we spent a lot of time at Alta One, making sure people understood how valuable it was to have their participation and for people to step up. So that was huge. And I think we made great strides. Now, yeah, I was excited to be there and it was very well received as we, we talked to the different uh, politicians. Yeah, because I think, you know, at the end of the day, one of the things that I think is really valuable and one of the things that we've done as an industry, and I think each and every one of you need to know this as you're in your communities and talking to your customers and to all the folks you interact with, this was bipartisan. This was something that everybody understood the when when they 
you know, when they were educated, understood the value of our product and how important it is, particularly for the first time home buyer. And those who, you know, this is the largest purchase. I know I don't need to tell you all this, yeah. that most people make in their life. It's so significant. And really you all are the ones educating them on why this is important, what they need to be doing and how this affects them. So it was very disheartening when I received a call just this morning from um, Director Thompson to share with um, our industry. She wanted to give us a heads up, albeit after the decision was made, which is, again, something that I was very clear with how disappointed we are to just be hearing about this. And again, we don't have to agree with everything they're doing, but we should be given the opportunity as an industry to have input on the front end, to share our concerns and why we have these concerns. And we understood, I she had invited, Director Thompson invited me for a one-on-one -on -one meeting about a month ago to have this conversation. And for some reason, today we're just finding out that they are now expanding the use of AOLs. Again, they use the language in limited circumstances to include condos and restrictive um, covenants, um, restrictive agreements and restrictive covenants. So, you know, very disheartening um, for us that we didn't have an opportunity to share with them what some of those risks are and mm -hmm. it could be expanded risks and others. And this is as much as an importance about how it affects the consumer as the process is about how they make these decisions that ultimately affect consumers. I will tell you, the good news is that as a result of this announcement being made today, we had already, without us even generating it, received calls, as is FHFA, from many of the members of Congress, again, on both sides of the aisles, concerned with, how can you be doing this after we've just had this conversation? And why right. are we not talking about this in advance? So, the important message that I love to leave with everybody here, and sorry to start out on such, you know, uh, breaking news, is the work that we're doing is so critical on the advocacy front to really make sure that people understand what we're doing and then to fight back, you know, and to make sure people understand that that's not acceptable and that as an industry, we have so much expertise and we bring so much value in the research and honestly, the folks who've stepped up to donate um, to help us sort of make this information is really, really important. So I'll stop there because I know that's a lot yeah. and I'm happy to answer any questions, Ted, but you, obviously breaking news here. <laughs> you and your entire staff deserve a round of applause for the work you put in in uh, defeating the um, pilot program. And uh, although the work continues, I know we can count on you to yeah, and this is a perfect example of people just not really understanding. You know, they think when they use the word limited, you know, how does that look? Now, I think we all know we are about to go into a, um, well, we're in the middle of a political, you know, presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. so there's going to be a lot of initiatives that people think are a good idea that um, we hope we'll never see the light of day. And this hopefully will be one of them. And we've got to continue to educate um, because you're right, not a lot of people know exactly what we do, all the curative work that goes through. That's why the claim rate is so low because we're very good at our job. Our agents are very good at what they're doing and doing their research, which is what brings those claim rates down. Right. And not to sort of, you know, uh, take up all of the time here, Ted, but I do want to um, respond to that, Tony, because I think many of you know because i know many of you have been involved but for those of you who don't we spent a lot of time this year with all of our um, members getting that information and that data in one place and we're going to be releasing that i actually told director thompson this morning we'd love to have an opportunity to meet with both fanny and freddie and you all at the same time all in the same room to share because we tell people this is what we do and our, our rates are five percent but we've never shown the data and we now have that data um, thanks to all of the work that you all have done and members of the industry who participated on our research efforts. And so that's going to be extraordinarily valuable to us because it is something we should be proud of. And all that curative work that's done up front is really unique um, to our industry. And I think educating people about that and demonstrating that is really valuable. And so much of where the claims come from do not come from the search part of it. Correct. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Ted, uh, with that being said, um, do you want to talk about some of the challenges that we've faced this year with all of the information Diane just shared with us? <laughs> well, that's 
that's fortunately Diane's challenge. <laughs> Our challenge is <laughs> uh, um, operating in a uh, declining real estate market. And it's no secret that the high interest rate environment that we experienced in 2023 put a damper on both home listings and home buying activity, as well as mortgage refinancings, which uh, drove down premium revenue for our agents and for us. Um, we've all read the articles saying that today's high interest rates have locked in potential home sellers who either can't afford to give up their 3% mortgage or simply don't want to buy another home at more than double their existing rate, and certainly I don't blame them for that. But uh, that impacted the availability of housing stock, um, and it therefore it's not really surprising that the number of existing homes this past year dropped by uh, sales, excuse me, dropped by more than 19% since last year, and refinance volume declined by uh, more than 50%. The good news is that the market is starting to slowly recover. Um, according to Alta, uh, their, net, their national data, total premium written in the first quarter of 2023 was down 43% compared to the first, first quarter of 2022. But by the third quarter, fortunately, uh, the rate of decline had decreased to just 24%. Our experience and the experience of our agents, many of our agents anyway, uh, largely mirrored the national average. Uh, after a very slow first quarter, we are seeing increased activity among our agents, which is resulting in a nice rebound in premium revenue, uh, which began in, late in the second quarter and we expect it to continue into 2024. And as year winds down, mortgage rates have been declining in recent weeks. Uh, we're now just over 7% for 30 year mortgage, which is down from nearly 7.8% just seven weeks ago. Um, there's also good news in housing stock with uh, active in inventory recently increasing year from a year ago level. And all this bodes pretty well for us and for our agents, I think in 2024, not going wood anyway. Yes, <laughs> from your lips. <laughs> <laughs> We need some good. We need some good news, Ted, for sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it looks like it's coming. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I know Diane. With all these initiatives, there was a bill that was introduced, the Protecting America's Property Rights Act, and its companion bill in the Senate, uh, 2687. I've, there's some resources under the chat section for uh, the folks that are attending. You can click on those links there. Um, with all of that said, you know, the additions to the Fannie Guide, what do you propose and what do you anticipate regarding the attorney opinion letters uh, and the bill? Yeah, actually, um, Tony, thank you for bringing that up. I think that's more important today than ever to remind people about that piece of legislation. And it's something you can actually point folks who want to support us. How can I help? Send in your support to your congressman. So we have we've introduced bills both in the House and in the Senate. Both of them are bipartisan, and we, you know, honestly, our discussion before I jumped on this uh, webinar today was we can actually use this as an opportunity. And what this legislation does that was introduced in August, it requires state regulated title insurance on all homes, right? All lenders' um, homes, which is huge. And again, when you explain to, you know, the consumer, but more, you know, in this case, when you're explaining it to the legislator, they get it. The good news is most of them, if they don't own a home, the, usually the member actually does, but if we're talking to their staff and others, they aspire to it. And most people understand how important that is and what it takes to get there. So having this piece of legislation that says title insurance is this important, and I think people who know title insurance tell people that, but to have a piece of legislation, again, in these days, supported by both sides as a bipartisan piece of um, um law that exists is very very critical so i'll repeat this tony if you don't mind it's protecting america's property rights act and in the house it's hr 5837 and the companion bill also called protecting americans property rights act is in the senate s2687 and happy to provide you know information on how to make sure you weigh in on the importance of that to your local um, legislators and at, at, at every level. Share that with your state land title associations and others. You, you don't have to be in the land title uh, industry. Your realtors, the lenders you deal with, it's really important for everybody to get on board to support this piece of legislation. 
And what can our agents do um, to help with that? You know, um, get this information out. Join TAN. For those of you who um, aren't familiar with the Title Action Network, we'll be putting out a update today that will have all this information in it. So you're aware and you're able to explain it when someone says to you, oh, I saw something on the news or I read something in my, you know, my, my newsletter. Can you give me more information? And you can point them in the direction of how they can support this piece of legislation. And TAN makes it very easy for uh, members of TAN to contact their uh, legislators to provide input on bills that are important to the industry. Yeah, and you know, I will say we saw this last year as we were um, as we were able to defeat the pilot program. Our industry is so well respected by the folks they interact with because people know that at the end of the day, you're trying to protect their biggest asset that they listen, you know, the members of Congress and their and their staff listen because it's not an expertise that they have, but because we are, you know, for lack of a better word, sort of this independent source of information and our goal is to protect them, it's something that they find very valuable. So don't underestimate your voice in this effort. Yeah, the nice thing is that with the TAN, it gives you the letters already written and it'll link to your your particular uh, politicians and it'll go right out there. So you don't have to draft anything and makes it really easy to spread the word and shout it from the rooftop. <laughs> yes, we need it more than ever. Absolutely. Um, so I wanna get out our crystal balls a little bit and kind of look forward to 2024 and just kind of, you can both give me some commentary, Diane, if you wanna start and, and what's some main initiatives. I know we've got a lot we've talked about, but what you're, what you're looking at as far as that crystal ball and, and then we'll hand it off to you, Ted. Yeah, I'll start with, you know, I think everybody's talking about AI. Anybody who came to Alta One, <laughs> how do we use it? What do we do it? And I think, you know, in my case, I just came from a two-day conference with other CEOs of trade associations. And some are further ahead, most are further behind. I think because of the nature of what we do and how we do it, it's as important. And one of the things we want to continue to do is provide our, our members with different ways um, that it can be utilized with practically in our, you know, in our day-to-day -day work and on behalf of our businesses. So um, we're going to have a few, some upcoming webinars, but more importantly at Springboard, for those of you who can make it in March, we will have a lot of hands-on um, interactive ways. And one of the things that I thought was really helpful, I picked up again in the last couple of days, we were about, I think many people are concerned about how it, you know, how it can negatively affect and there are those concerns and they're very real. And as your trade association and on behalf of the industry, we are getting involved in the, on the public policy piece around that, helping shape that, just like we've done with a lot of issues at the state level, creating some model legislation, making sure there's nothing that would adversely affect us the way we do our business. But more importantly, how do we use it to create efficiencies? And I think that's something as an industry we've been doing so well right? Our actual costs have gone down as a result of the way we've been using technology in a positive way. And I really think that there's an opportunity for um, us as an industry to embrace that and to do that. And I know many are, but we want to share that with others, those who are a little trepidatious about doing it. And I picked up, I thought this was a really interesting, um, someone said you should use AI the way you would use an intern, right? To help Get, gather information to look at it. But again, at the end of the day, you have to make sure everything's accurate and you have to make sure what's in there is going to benefit um, the others. And no one's really going to lose their job as a result of AI, but they might lose their job to the person who knows how to use AI, right? So I think that's sort of what we want to continue to make. You know, we want our members and our industry to be comfortable with all of these different tools. Again, it's just another tool not something to be afraid of, but something we can be embracing. And our job is to make sure that there's nothing that's going to adversely affect the way we do our, our business. For sure, yeah, yeah. Diane, I, I would agree that AI can be useful to the industry, but it uh, depends on how it's implemented. Um, yes. Our, our uh, benefit is the degree of care we put into each title, and uh, we need to keep that in mind. Right. And we are the experts, and we understand that. So at the end of the day, that's just another tool you can use, but it's never going to replace all the other important work yeah. that we do. Also need to fact check it too, because although there's a lot of information there, it's not always all accurate. It's being what's fed in. Yes, yes. So Ted, looking in your crystal ball, what, what does that look like for next year for our agents? 
Well, um, next year, the predictions are that interest rates are going to continue to decline. Um, I've heard the predictions for just over 6% by the end of the year. That should help to bring back both buyers and sellers into the market. Um, of course, if there's an increase in buyers and not as much of an increase in sellers, that's just going to continue to increase uh, home prices. Um, but as long as we can get those two into balance, then it should be a, a good year for the industry overall. I think the uh, forecast is for about a 6% or a little bit more than 6% growth in home sales for next year. And the MBA is forecasting a 52% increase in refi activity, though, of course, that's coming off of a very anemic year. So uh, while it will be very helpful, it's uh, uh, not exactly as stellar as it might otherwise sound. Um, but all in all, 2024 should be a good year for security title for the industry and for our agents. Perfect. Um, any other tidbits for 2024, Diane? No, I'll just sort of build on what you were saying, Ted. I think the work that your agents are, have done, even in this tough market, educating people and making sure people understand the importance of title insurance will pay off in 2024. Because as once people become more um, comfortable and they, you know, this instability has sort of settled down, things become more stable. I don't know about you, but I think you know, if you've been out traveling, things are getting a little normal, you know, people are back to traveling. I think all of those norms that were sort of, you know, halted during the pandemic are starting to sort of work their way out. We're, to your point, I think we're going to start seeing people wanting to move and to start moving forward again without sort of sitting still. Um, and I think that will be really valuable to us. And, and we've got the data that shows that right and so i think the more people get comfortable with that the more we'll start to see those things yes normal interest rates right we were in a very uh unique time we've not seen those interest rates in a long time i know my parents had a 16 17 18 percent interest rate so to me it's kind of the new norm right i was reading i was reading it's the highest uh since february of 2020 when, that was the last time we saw seven percent interest rates so right. <laughs> yes. and, Look wow. over 20 years, 8% is actually normal. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So six would no, be great. We have, been in, we have been in a low interest rate environment for a long time. Right. <laughs> right. We've forgotten what normal is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I knew this time was going to fly by. We are at the end of our time here, but um, you know, we, if there's anybody that has questions, we could take a, a few in the, the chat box there in the question box. So um not seeing anything coming across currently. But um, I really would like to thank you, Diane. Um, appreciate you taking the time to come on board. These are really important things. Um, and, and thank you, Ted. I know you, your schedule is crazy busy over there. So thank you both for joining me here today. Thank well, you. Ted, thank you, Diane. Yeah, no, Ted, thank you and all of your team at uh, Security Title. You guys have been such a great partner for Alta and on behalf of the industry. We appreciate all the time Tony donates to our committees and other work and all the members of your team because honestly as an industry we're so much stronger with one voice and i think one of the things that i recognize when i stepped into this role is we have so much value and our people are so good at what they do but they don't like talking about themselves right <laughs> they rather go in there and get the job done but we got to get people comfortable with tooting their own horns and letting people know how powerful we are because we are we are an industry for good what we do you know, energizes this country, it keeps our economy going, it builds wealth, it helps people educate their children. It's such an important part of the fabric of our society. And we need to, you know, I think your words, Tony, yell it from the highest mountain. <laughs> amen, amen. Um, it doesn't Thank look you like, everyone I think for joining us today. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions. Did you have any last, last comments to our team, uh, Ted? Happy no other than have a great 2024 everyone and uh, happy holidays happy new year thank you we are here to help um here at security title thank you for joining us our next webinar will be on thursday january 11th at 2 p.m 1 p.m central with perla of payments io we're going to talk about some secure disbursements all of our previous webinars have been recorded and can be found on our website under the video section uh, we wish everybody a very merry and happy new year and a prosperous new year and we hope to see you on our next webinar. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Ted. Guys, Thanks. happy holidays. Thanks. Bye.